Uh, well, Bucks Daniel Wells uh, looked pretty good on the track. Is he right to go? He did. He'll have to pull up well, but um, yeah, we'll have three or four changes, and he'll definitely be um, one that we'll look at. Is Will Hoskin how's he looking? Uh, same. Trained better than expected, to be honest. But um, once again, we've got a couple of days, and we'll. Um, those two boys will have to see how they pull up. Could Josh Dacos be one of the changes? He could be. Yeah, um, yeah obviously been on the cusp with the, the carryover last week um, and, um, and and had real solid form through the VFL. Our VFL program's been in good nick, so we know that the guys that will be called upon um, you know, will, um, will have opportunities to fulfil role and they'll be in form. What stopped him getting a game earlier? Who's that? Dacos. Uh, he's not getting the game yet, but um, no, nothing. Just the form of form of players above him, um, natural development that you're looking for, um, you know, putting a decent you know, block of footy together that, that provides that confidence of being able to take the next step. Uh, it's not all about kicks, marks, and handballs, but it is about the ability to play a role for the side um, and continue to to develop to a point where you're ready to take that step. You know, sometimes it's not altogether about you know, being the best players either. It's about you know, bringing your strengths to the table that, that could add, add to the mix. So um, you know, that's what we look at with, you know, with, with the Dacos, with Broomhead, uh, Ramsey Smith, um, you know, those guys that have been performing, you know, Lockie Keefe, who have been performing pretty well at the VFL level that'll, that'll be in, uh, in the mix um, this afternoon. Cale Kirby? Yeah, Coops has been good too, and he's probably one of those guys that, um, you yeah, know, still has a way to go. But he's what he does at VFL level, he does really well. Um, we're very aware that there's a big there's a big leap between VFL and AFL, and that's why we're we've got the players' best interests at heart at when when we pull the trigger on on the elevation. How much belief do you take in given some of the footy you've played against Geelong in recent times? Oh yeah, look, I think every every one of those games stands on its own and you need to um, you need to execute to get the result um, so you know, the, I think recent form is great but it's not really going to count for a lot when you when you get to Saturday afternoon so we need to make sure that we go in the right plan with the group that we'll have and it might be six or seven different from last time we played and that's invariably the case um, they'll be a little bit different again and you know their form in the last couple of weeks in particular has been really strong so we you know, and they're a legitimate top four team. So it's a, it's a good test for, for the players that take the part. With Dugowie's surgery, will that affect his pre-season in terms of the start date look? Don't expect it to. Um, he's, um, he's been playing a little bit sore the last couple of weeks and it just got, you know, we sort of, we tipped over the edge a little bit quicker than we thought. We thought he'd get to the end of the year. Um, so we'll, um, yeah, we'll clean that up, but it's, um, it's, it's as much about his, his, abil his lack of ability to actually go. Like he won't be, he, sort of, he can't play. And clearly, that last three, three quarters last week, he was unable to, to reach the intensity required. And so we, we've turned him out. We'll get the work done, and, and he'll be fresh enough for day one of preseason. Is he someone that will become a full-time midfielder, or do you see him becoming that, being that? Oh, midfielder? well, he's been um, a really damaging one-on-one -on -one forward for us. Um, but he's, a, he's an elite stoppage player. He's still you know, rounding out his game and, and the ability to transition run. He, he has the ability to do it, but just the awareness of, of how to do that. And that's, that's probably his next um, stage of development. But you know, we've, been, um, we've been really rapt to see how he's come to hand this year. Um, and yeah, in more time in the system and with more exposure, he'll um, you know, he, he could be a legitimate A-grade mid and, and a, a very dangerous forward. Do you think that um, his actions at the start of the year was a, a turning point in how he's responded? All of those, all of those events are opportunities to grow from. Um, and there's no doubt that we've, we have seen Geordie um, mature and um, understand a little more about what professional sport is asking for. Um, it happens for different people at different times, at different rates. Um, we seem to be, we're, we're all in a rush to see 20-year-olds um, become 30-year-olds in their head or emotionally, you know, before their time. But, you know, Geordie's a bull. He's, um, he's an alpha male. He acts first and thinks later. And that's not a bad way to be on the football field um, for when, it, when you really need the heat on. Um, and he's going to keep learning about himself as he goes along. And, 
he's um, he's tracking nicely. Bucks the weekend result obviously means finals officially is out of the question. How's that feel? I guess for you and the, the cl- and, and the players, I guess that now it's officially out, out of reach. I guess. Um, yeah, we. I mean, whilst what was it, less than a one percent mathematical mm. chance or something. So we um, we weren't keeping an eye on the odds, um, and we we weren't projecting any further forward than, than the next week. So so that won't change for us. You know, we've um, we've been uh, I've, I've been proud of the players' ability to maintain their um, their discipline and their energy levels. Um, to the way that we've handled the last four or five weeks. Um, we, we didn't quite get to the level last week, but I've got no reason to sus- suspect that we would have any drop off just because the mathematical chance of finals has, has left us. Um, yeah, we, we come up against two really good opponents in the last two weeks and it's a chance for, for, um, for players to um, you know, play the game at the top level against the best and, and, to, and to continue to test themselves and that's that's our mentality. Pendle said something quite interesting a week ago, he said when the players found out that you were guaranteed you for the rest of the year, they, they played like the, the pressure was off and they played probably the best footy that they played under you. Is, it, is there something in that that, you know, I guess it's to the, the, the mentality of the players like, and the pressure that they, they I guess may have felt as a result of your situation, if maybe the situation was set a little bit early. Like, um, oh well, look, you could t- I'll take that at face value. I think there's, um, you know, it's it's a it's a mute point. Was sort of something that we're assessing in in retrospect. But mm. um, you know, not, the the players have handled it extremely well, and and um, I think we've we've been able to maintain our focus more often than not. The games that we've lost, we we've lost because we haven't done enough right. In, on, you know, in the games and the games we've won, we've um, we've been able to execute what we've what we've gone in with and, and had you know, enough contributors. So I don't, there's no secret formula. Board meeting Tuesday. Would you anticipate knowing more about your future following that? Um, yeah, I, I believe that that while she's and Pete Murphy are putting together, you know, the, the information that they've they've gleaned from from the review and and what the what the club's plans are going forward and. Um, we've said pretty consistently that the end of the season would be when those discussions take place. So I'm not really expecting anything until after the Melbourne game. How You've got are you a nice... feeling about it, though? Obviously, after the comments that you made at the end of last season about you know the imperative to make finals this year, that hmm. that now is effectively, as you say, a less than one percent chance. Yeah. No, I think we're zero now. Um, no, look, that's yeah, that'll 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 all come in. To consideration, it'll all be part of the discussion that the club has uh, at the end of the year. You got a nice endorsement from Rodney Eid uh, this morning. Would you like to work with Rocket again if there was a position available for him? I'm not thinking about where I'm working beyond here at the moment. Just, uh, well, we joked about it before the press, but with the whole Bernard Hardy stuff, did you and the club have to take it any further since you last publicly spoke in Adelaide, or was it that was it? That was done and dusted there and that. No, bar being asked about a possibility of a rumour of a bit of innuendo of a comment um, and answering it, there's been nothing. Hey, I'm sorry. <laughs> 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 right motivation. Do you want to go on that? Well, no, not on that. But, uh, okay. A comment you made about a month ago interests me that the contract sort of situation goes both ways. It's, yeah. it's not only the club that's got a call to make a game, you have too. So uh, you're 100% about wanting to be the coach next year. That'll that'll all be part of the discussion that'll take place at the end of the year because as the as the club is um, gathering information for what its future is, um, I'm interested to see what that is also, um, and I'll be part of that discussion. So you can't make that decision for yourself until you see all that information. Um, it's not something that I'm thinking about until the end of the year. On the John game, I'm just interested in motivation now that you know mathematically all that stuff's done. Brendan Bolton said last week he was interested in poking the finger in the eye of some teams just remind them that they're around even though they're not playing finals. Is there anything like that going through the head of the year in the place? Um, well, I think we've done that in many ways over the last um, four or five weeks. So we've got two weeks to go. We will play on the MCG against some, some finals bound teams um, in front of our faithful, uh, doing something that you know, we've dreamed of as kids you know, through our whole childhood. Um, so we're not going to take it that for granted. You know, so we'll have 22 fit players who will take the park and we want to play as good a football as we possibly can. 
Um, there's plenty enough time to rest through the off season. Um, and the pre-season will come around soon enough to, to prepare for 2018, but we're not done for 17 yet. So um, we don't take any opportunity to, to pull the Guernsey on for granted and, and our players um, you know, have that responsibility and, and are accountable to their performance accordingly. And so the MCG performance particularly important to you, given you know, it's only three games in one season? Um, yeah, well, if we could get a couple more wins, we'd take that. Uh, MRP obviously back in the news today and suggested that players seem to think that they may have overcorrected, particularly on, on jumper punching. Have you have you got a view on the panel? Um, it doesn't seem to be consistent and uh, potentially we need to be careful what we wish for because I'm not so sure that we're seeing uh, adequate um, or commensurate penalties for the right actions um, and as I said probably around the, the you know Brody suspension um, it was cut and dried the way the rules are written that's exactly how it needed to be and should have been with the two-week penalty we, we were not surprised by that at all and you can't challenge it because the way the rules are written it's really clear that there's no challenge against that um, but I think that there'll be a few interesting discussions um, with the clubs and the, and the league around where the game is going, you know, how, we, um, how we can uh, take away some of the acts that we don't want to see in the game, but not be um, heavy handed with, with some of those penalties as well, because I'd, I'd, some of them just don't add up to me. You went down the box ticking route a few mm. years ago. Do we mm. maybe need to move away from that and have a bit more flexibility? Uh, potentially, but I mean, box ticking's fine if you've got the right, the right sort of questions asked behind it. Um, there's not a lot of grey area in it, and, and I think you know, even the Red Path appeal probably shows that it's fa it's fairly cut and dried, and you don't see clubs appealing that often because it's there's not a lot of wriggle room. Um, but that's you know that's for the um, for the AFL and the um, and footy operations to to work out and. Oh, they've got a tough job. There's, there's always plenty on the agenda, so that um, there's no doubt that'll be addressed over the off. So it's adding another grading in between intentional and careless, um, something that might give you some wriggle room. Oh, we can spitball about it for a while, Rob. Um, and when I've got more time, we'll sit down and we'll do that. <laughs> <laughs> Cheers.